Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I trust everybody is uh, having a great week here. Uh, just started out for a lot of you, I'm sure. But uh, here we go. So uh, what are we doing today? Um, like I said, uh, kind of a short week here. Uh, you guys just have your odd classes today and then your even classes tomorrow. So then we got that flex day on Thursday uh, because it's conferences. So um, uh, just kind of another reminder here is that I'm gonna be updating the grade book and uh, please continue to be proactive uh, about stuff that you've turned in. Uh, because we're going to be posting grades later in the week, and I want to make sure that everybody uh, everybody has an up-to-date grade. So uh, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to review the terms with you. We're going to play a little Quizlet Live. Uh, you got a Quizlet link on there without pictures uh, to kind of help you out for what that quiz is going to be like at the end of today. I'll get you going on Chapter 12 Guided Notes. I might even do the first couple with you here. This Chapter 12 Guided Notes is kind of important to me because this is kind of the last thing that we are doing with World War One. We're not going to do a flip grid for World War One. Uh, we had to cut something out, so we're just gonna we're gonna miss uh, we're gonna kind of kind of forego uh, that flip grid. I would say for for this unit because <clears throat> we got to get into the next thing. We got to get into World War Two next thing we meet. So we're gonna I'm gonna give you a shameless plug here in a moment, but not yet. And then uh, we'll finish up the hour with uh, a little term quiz. So um, let's all go to quizlet.live and get right into it right now. Quizlet.live. Eight four eight two zero seven. Nice job. Okay, how many kids we got in here? Let's see, what did that say? Twenty five. So that would be twenty three. We need. Okay, waiting on just a couple more of you here. Give you another 20 seconds and then we'll get going. All right, here we go. Here are your spirit animals, and they're racing. Away. All right. Round one goes to McKenna. Here we go. And there. Racing.
Round two to soar. And all right, here we go. Last one. This one's for all the Tostitos. And they're racing. All right. Here we go, folks. Let's go right back to Schoology here. Okay. So um, what you're going to need to do the next part here, or this is, uh, here's where you'll find your chapter 12 guided notes. So you'll want to open up this PDF and throw that into uh, Notability so that you can complete that. Okay, and then how else do we complete that? Well, we need the textbook link. So I'm gonna go out to the main page here. Here's the US history textbook. I'm gonna go down and find chapter 12. So this one that says unit three, chapter 12, and open that up. Okay, and I'm just gonna walk you through a couple of sections here. And like I said, I'm gonna be looking through this chapter 12 guided notes pretty, uh, or and, and looking through each of your answers here because I want to make sure that you uh, that you guys understand this stuff pretty well. Okay, so five sections in chapter twelve. Okay, uh, it's kind of going to go going to go chronologically here. And that section one is going to talk about the causes. Is going to talk about the road to war. And then section five, you'll start to talk about Wilson, the fourteen points at the end of the war. There. Okay, uh, little timeline for how this. Uh, how this unfolded here, you guys all should know by now that World War One is between 1914 and 1918, that the United States isn't going to get involved uh, in the war or declare war until 1917, okay? Um, I want you to understand some of these vocab words that you are seeing in uh, in the section here, okay? So I want you to be able to tell. Uh, I want you to be able to speak knowledgeably about these uh, about these different isms. The first ones that you're going to see right there in twelve point one, okay? Imperialism, militarism, nationalism, secret alliances, all of the uh, all of those things. I want you to be able to understand how those came uh, to cause World War One. You know, people often talk about the assassination of Fran uh, Archduke Franz Ferdinand as, as the, this is what, you know, the real cause of the war. Well, I would argue that this was more of the spark, okay? So these uh, these other ideas here, imperialism, mil militarism, nationalism, those are really what the causes were behind World War One. This was just the spark that really kind of uh, blew up the powder keg that was the, uh, uh, what was going on in the world at that time. So right away for the first chart there, you, uh, what I want you to understand is that European powers were competing with each other uh, across the globe to try to get as many uh, nations as they could, okay, under their imperial, uh, what do I wanna say, umbrella, so to speak, okay? So all of these European nations are competing for colonies across the globe, okay? And that's kind of what is going to lead to this competition for uh, some of these other areas of the world. OK, uh, by the end of World War One, you're really going to see an end to colonialism here. You're going to see an end uh, in you could argue you're going to see more imperialism than uh, colonialism afterward. But understand that Germany, Britain, France, all of these nations are competing to get as many countries as they could uh, in, in Asia, in, in Africa, okay, all about the globe. And that competition is really what is going to cause some of these other things, okay? Militarism. Um, <clears throat> basically, this policy, uh, right where it says here, the policy involved aggressively building up a nation's armed forces in uh, preparation for war. And this competition, okay, and militarism between countries was understanding that, you know, if Germany has X number of weapons, we want to make sure that we have more. If they have this number of 
of troops, we want to make sure that we have more. So people were building up their own military just for the idea that they wanted to make sure that they had more than their opponent. Um, yeah, so here we go. Nationalism. Nationalism, we already talked about a little bit here. It is kind of a synonym for patriotism, but nationalism is different in that it kind of comes with the idea that you are better than other people, okay? That you're better than other people. They, nationalism kind of led all of these countries to believe that this war would be over uh, by Christmas. They thought this war would just be a couple of weeks, and that nationalism built them up into a frenzy, thinking that, they, that this war would be over so quickly because that they were superior to everybody else, okay? Alliances is a big one, and I wish that the chapter talked a little more about it, in that alliances were really a cause for this war because, you know, since Germany and Austria-Hungary have this, uh, have an alliance going, and Russia and France have this alliance going, and, and Great Britain and France have this alliance going, it wasn't necessarily that Germany wanted to go to war with Britain, but because Austria-Hungary had an alliance with Germany, and, and you've got all of these loose uh, alliances, and people had to... Uh, People had to get in because of these alliances, okay? So it's getting involved in a war that they didn't necessarily want to do, okay? But simply because they were involved in these secret alliances. If they were more public, okay, then perhaps we could have avoided this thing, okay? Um, mobilization, when people talk about mobilization, your next one there in the sheet there, that's just getting uh, readying your troops for war. That could include, you know, uh, a military draft. It could involve people uh, enlisting, whatever it might be, but you are mobilizing to the point where you're getting your uh, nation ready for war. A lot of people would consider mobilization basically to be an act of war, okay? Uh, for central powers and for allies, what I essentially want you to do on this sheet here is I want you to just list the countries that are in there. So for central powers, go ahead and list, uh, excuse me, uh, go ahead and list Germany, and Austria, Hungary. Okay, and then for uh, the allies at the end of the list there, I want you to put Russia, France, Serbia, and Great Britain. We're called the allies, okay? So that's your first page, folks. That's ex essentially what I wanted to make sure that you have down for section one. Okay, this should be a pretty, uh, pretty quick study guide, I would think here, um, in that what I want you to do is I want you to tell me the significance of those, okay? So like, let's, let's go right to the first one, section 12.2, where it says U-boat, okay? Now, if you were to just give me the face value of what, uh, of what a U-boat is, you would say, oh, it's like a submarine. It's an Unterseeboot. It's what the, uh, it's, you know, it, it was just a, a German U-boat, or excuse me, a German U-boat was essentially, you know, one of the, one of the first submarines. But the significance of the Unterseeboot or the significance of the submarine, okay, was that it really changed naval warfare, okay? For example, you know, when we, uh, when the United States is sending ships to, to Britain or the, or, or whomever, you know, you've got these, uh, British ships going back and forth, um, and Germany is going to blow them right out of the water. Well, the problem with that is, is that who, you know, where, is there a line in the water is, you know, about who owns what part of the ocean or what part of the sea? Okay, so it kind of uh, is really going to change naval warfare in that, uh, you know, this unrestricted um, U-boat, um, you know, uh, declaring war against ships that aren't, uh, that aren't warships was really uh, a major rub that the United States had with Germany, okay? So um, I hope that is a good example of how I want you to tell me the significance of something as opposed to just defining it. So if you write down for U boat and you just put Untersee boat, it's like, okay, you, you tell me the definition, but you didn't tell me the significance. And hopefully that makes sense for you. Okay. Good. All right. Um, make sure that you submit that to me. I think the due date on that is early next week and you can check that out right on, uh, on Schoolio here. So Go to updates here, and you can see over on the right hand side that we've got your World War One crash course play posit that I'm going to be putting into the grade book here later in the week, and then your chapter 12 guided notes is going in there as well. So make sure that you uh, are paying attention to those due dates. Okay. Um, last thing that I want to talk about before I give you uh, before we go and attack that uh, that World War One quiz is my own shameless plug uh, for a course that we are offering next year, okay? Um, this is going to be a team taught uh, course that's available for 11th and 12th graders. And since you guys are sophomores, 
you could take this class uh, next year, and it's called Hamilton History and Music. And essentially what it is, is, is Mr. Mariska is gonna be talking about the music from Hamilton as I talk about the history uh, of Hamilton. So if you are interested in uh, the formation of American government, if you're interested in the American Revolution, um, that's what we're going to be studying. Okay, you can either take this for a social studies credit or a music credit. So if you haven't uh, satisfied your fine arts requirement yet, this might be something that you want to take a look at. Okay, um, don't worry if you're not musically inclined, we're not going to make you stand in front of the class and sing or anything like that. It's just basically us taking a close look at the lyrics, at the music, and how it was developed. But also, we're going to take it the uh, to wow, take a look at the historical links that are linked to it. If you have any questions about this course, uh, don't be afraid to stick around here, and I can answer anything uh, for you as best I can. Okay, um, so yeah, without further. Uh, Without talking at you too much more, I'm going to open up that quiz here. And like I said, I'll stick around.